The RTX 40 generation of products from NVIDIA has been nothing short of fascinating in terms of marketing and just how the market itself has received it, i.e. gamers. There have been some standouts, for example the RTX 4090, its performance is undeniable, albeit at a price which basically just makes your eyes water, however there also have been a number of cards which, quite frankly, have just been absolutely baffling in not only their pricing, but also their general specification and product tiering. 8 gigabytes of memory, anyone. But, let's be honest, the market continues to drive forward, and at this point everyone is talking about the RTX 50 series of graphics cards. To this end, there are a couple of very fascinating rumours which are swirling around online, and back up some of my previous leaks regarding Blackwell. As you can imagine, we're going to get into all of this and more after this message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things out with the actual product timing of RTX 50 because I think it's very important for us to get some kind of reference point. Now, as far as we understand, RDNA 4 will of course launch first, but as we've talked about a billion times at this point, N40 as well as N41 and the higher product tiers have basically been cancelled, leaving 44 and 43 as the sole proprietors of the RDNA 4 lineup. Now, the good news is these cards are probably still going to be pretty interesting, and there will certainly be a lot of folks, I imagine, that who want to buy them, but they don't perform as well as the 7900 XTX. I've heard mixed things regarding their performance, but long story short, it's probable that RDNA 3 and the high-end uh, GPU GPUs which fall within the lineup will probably remain the king. But from my general understanding, speaking to a lot of sources at this point, around six quarters later, assuming there's no product slippage, we will see RDNA 5 launch, and obviously the performance of these GPUs is apparently going to be significantly better. Now, the launch timing for RTX 50 has been the subject of a lot of debate. I was originally hearing that the cards were going to launch late 2024, but then we saw, I think it was Hardware Lux, released a roadmap which indicated instead it's going to be some point in the first half, most likely the first quarter of 2025. And again, there's a lot of backwards and forwards of exactly when these products are going to launch, so it's going to be very interesting. But most likely, anyway, AMD will probably launch RDNA f uh, f uh, 5 after RTX 50 launches, at least in general terms. So it's going to be very interesting to see how NVIDIA counters, or if they do, because, well, let's now start talking about some of the rumours concerning the performance, as well as, of course, some of the architecture stuff. So... Let's first of all talk about some updates from Copertyke 7 Kimi. The first thing they state is that GB100 is going to be an MCM design. Now, this is something that I've actually mentioned several times on the channel previously from my own rumors, that the high-end Blackwell, at least for server, are almost certainly going to be chiplet in design. Now, there was allegedly, from what I was hearing anyway, a possibility that it was just going to be an absolutely monstrous monolithic design, but it was much more likely from the very early concept stages anyway of the bring up, or should I say the design, not the bring up, the design, that they were going to go with a chiplet based solution. And of course, this is just logical in a server setting, especially what they're facing with uh, AMD at the moment, especially with the later MI, um, with the MI GPUs. Um, and they also mention that while, at uh, Coppertite, I mean, that while the actual general, for example, GPCs on the uh, GPU aren't significantly higher, Architecture but really is what is going to offer the performance benefits when it comes to Blackwell. And this, of course, is also going to most likely trickle down to the RTX 50 series of cards as well. 
Um, Blackwell basically will have some architecture differences between, of course, the gaming and data center GPUs, as always, but a lot of these changes, of course, will, you know, see themselves uh, in both lineups. And this actually is very much what I was hearing as well. Um, and I have mentioned in several videos in the past that some of the things that I'd heard was some type of new bus structure, and this seems to be basically present throughout the GPU. I've heard some mixed things exactly how it works, but it's supposedly going to link everything from the SMs to the various memory systems in a very different way. Another thing is I was told that the SMs themselves have changed quite a bit. Uh, one person described it as the legacy, quote on quote, uh, design that you could kind of see from a lot of NVIDIA generations is not exactly gone, but a lot of stuff is going to change. And basically, the GPU is going to be significantly changed. All of this means that uh, it's going to be a very interesting comparison point if we get a like-for-like -like part anyway, just to see exactly how it scales, particularly given the clock frequency. Now, there are also some very interesting rumors which are swirling on chip hell, and I want to talk to you guys about this, um, but I'm going to give you the caveat after, because I think it's very important to just go over the general stuff first. Now, the person who posted this is known as Panzalide, and generally speaking, they've had a pretty good track record for this stuff, but basically they've stated that in terms of the scale, it's 50% increase. Presumably this means SMs or something like that. 52% increase in memory bandwidth, 78% in cache, 15% in terms of clock frequency, and overall a 70% improvement in performance. Now, most likely um, GDDR7 memory is going to be used. This is something that I've, you know, heard many times. And at this stage, you know, we've seen the production schedules of GDDR7. So it's not exactly very difficult to kind of guess, well, this is what they're doing. Um, I've also heard that the modules of GDDR7, the larger modules, the larger capacity modules, excuse me, will be employed, the 24 GBs, for example. And this, of course, will mean that if you have a narrower bus, let's say 128 bit, you won't get any of those eight gigabyte memes that we've been seeing. However, this is where the caveat comes into play. I've also heard that there are a lot of different designs being considered, and the, the ultimate reality is, to my understanding anyway, this design, this particular one anyway, it could certainly be the one that which gets released. However, it has not been ratified yet. It's not been carved in stone, i.e. it has not been taped out and finalized. Jensen has not given his little seal of approval when it comes to the RTX 50 lineup at this point. And if you guys have been around, let's say, for the RTX 30 or RTX 40 rumors, you'll know that things changed a lot, even with the RTX 4090. Like, God knows how many different uh, different designs and different changes there were. Like, one of the things I heard, for example, is that the L2 caches weren't going to be significantly bigger. So it's very difficult to know exactly what's going on. I have heard, however that um, ray tracing performance as well as the tensor core performance is significantly improved with the uh, RTX 50 series of cards. And this has been something that a lot of folks have said at this point. There are a lot of rumors, honestly, that uh, I've heard. And basically, I was going to, I actually wrote a script and I'm pretty much ignoring a lot of what I've put there at the moment because I've basically decided to try to get some more confirmation because there are so many... <sighs> A lot of stuff is just in flux at the moment with these GPUs. And we're at the point where, roughly speaking anyway, a couple of months could make a lot of difference when it comes to the specifications. I think the architecture stuff is a lot more in stone, as a general statement anyway, than the specifications. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how these cards play out because again high-end rdna4 is basically canned but high-end rdna5 isn't now my speculation is that there is going to be no rdna3 refresh rdna3.5 is as you guys know a kind of a hybrid between rdna3 and rdna4 i'm speaking generally here there are you know a few changes basically here and there under the hood for example the salu stuff that we've talked about a lot but that is basically for apus only and it's going to be part of let's say uh Sarlacc, you know the 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 apus um in uh, strix point 
and it is not coming to desktop unless AMD radically changes their plans. And they're also not going to do some type of like a 7950 XTX or something like that. At least I don't think so with like a, a shrunk down process node or anything like that because they would... They would need to do a lot of changes under the hood. To my understanding, anyway, there have been some architectural, mm, let's say, hiccups with N31 as well as some of the others. And some of this stuff has been improved with N32. They scale relatively well. But um, yeah, you know, to really to really make it worth it in terms of a refresh, they would need to do a lot of stuff. And it's really not worth it. Um, I think that at this stage, AMD are kind of doing the right thing. I don't, I'm also somewhat skeptical that there'll be an RTX uh, 40 refresh. Maybe Nvidia could release a refresh with arguably some small changes in the lineup just to make it kind of more viable in the mid range. But I don't know. I, I kind of get the feeling that they're just going to be in a holding pattern. There are still some uh, RTX 40 cards which need to release, like the lower end ones. And it's going to be very interesting, to be honest, to see how all of this plays out. I uh, I will be very curious, too, to see what happens with Intel. I recently uh, discussed uh, Battle Mage and the fact that some of the performance station that I was hearing is kind of worrying. It's actually underperforming. In compute, it's doing really well, but in gaming performance, it's underperforming versus what it was originally intended. It was roughly intended to face, uh, face excuse me, the RTX 4080 tier performance, but it seems more like the 4070 at the moment. Now, whether or not this can be resolved with, let's say, tweaks, and you know drivers and all this other stuff i don't know i've honestly heard a lot of mixed information at this point and so i just i i'm hopeful but i will be very interested to see what nvidia does actually with these gpus and also what the pricing is speculatively i don't expect rtx 50 to be cheap i think that it's very likely as well. I've been hearing some rumors that Zen 5 is also going to be uh, more expensive too. Um, and I think that's just kind of the way of things, which obviously sucks balls because, I mean, the RTX 4090, like, that hurt. But I think... For me, it wasn't just the 4090 price. It was like, there was just a lot of different GPUs, which honestly were just very weird in the RTX 40 lineup. Um, I'm very curious to hear what you guys heard. Uh, sorry, what you guys were paying or expected to pay for the 4080. Like at points here, it was almost parity between the lower end 4090 uh, prices and the high end 4080 skews like it was just ridiculous you're, like, you're talking like 100 200 bucks difference between the 4080 and 4090 and if you go back a generation and you're like well you know the 3080 versus the 3080 ti okay you know a small a small bump in price for that extra couple of gigs of ram or a few extra cuda cores fine but the the disparity in specifications is just ridiculous so I'll be very interested to see whether there's any lessons learned. Ultimately, NVIDIA have just been selling really, um, you know, just a crap ton of their cards. Um, I will say that uh, N32 seems relatively successful for AMD. The uh, 7800 XT seems particularly a decent seller. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm rambling at this point. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.